I'll post it as like a YouTube video, like an interview. Okay. And all, and all that jazz. Cool. So, yeah, it's all easy. So like, if you want to change anything, or whatever, we can go back across. But um, yeah, no, you do whatever. Yeah, so, I, sweet, I won't bro, care. Sweet. Cool, cool, cool. So welcome to episode five of uh, the Poker Listing Table Talk podcast. We just had Ryan Feldman on from Hostel Casino Live. Oh shit. Sure. Uh, it's been really cool. I guess, like, you can say a top dog in the industry. And then, I guess, on the other side, we've got the top dog of the Wind Daily. <laughs> yeah, for now, for now. For now. <laughs> for now. Um, so, yeah, so, like, Jeremy, welcome, dude. Um, Appreciate it. I guess a good start would just be, like, give give us your poker story, I guess, what's led you to this point in the game. Um. So, growing up uh, in New York, poker, never really heard about it. Never uh, was into poker, never watched it, anything like that. Um, when I got to college, I went to school 10 minutes from a casino. And in the state of Florida, where I went, you uh, you got to be 18 to play poker, but 21 to gamble all table games. Right. So I was always pretty DJ and me and my friends growing up. So I liked gambling. So I got super into the poker. They played uh, the game I was playing was 1-1, one, one, no limit, total rate crap, um, $100 max. Probably yeah. nobody beating it, I would assume. And uh, I was a caddy. You know what that is at a golf course? Yeah, so you thought you help like golfers go around, right, with the, with the uh, yeah, clubs and all that. Yeah, it's the best yeah. job a kid can have. I mean, super good money. It's all cash. So I saved up some money. So I was nice. just losing it all completely. Um, <laughs> I probably – I mean, I'm sure I won every once in a while, but I'm pretty much losing every single day. And that's really right. how uh, – how I learned just by playing and losing. And I noticed like a few people like seem to be winning. So I got into it. I really got into it my sophomore year, but I started going the end of my freshman year. So during that summer, I, uh, I would go on YouTube and watch a little bit, you know, yeah, and uh, try to learn something. And Who did you watch if you ask mommy asking, I used to watch like the high stakes poker stuff, you know. So Negreanu, yeah, yeah. which is awesome. Uh, that's cool, yeah. Whoever used to play on that show, Benjamin, Gus Hansen, whoever. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was into. Um. Yeah, and I mean, eventually, I just went from one one to one two. Finally, when I started making a little bit, and then two five and uh, five ten. The biggest I used to play was um. I played in a five ten twenty game pretty consistently. And uh, yeah, right. that's pretty much how I came up in poker. Damn. Okay. So like, it's funny you saying that because if it's like someone obviously looks at your head in or like just hears about what you've been doing recently, they say, "Oh, you just seem like a, a complete tiny player." But you've you've grown up in the game through cash. Yeah, I played cash. So I think I started playing cash in let's say 2014 or 2015, right. and I got into tournaments really right before COVID started. So what? When was that? How many years ago? Like late 2019, right? Like end yeah, of the year. I started getting yeah. into it. And the casino shut down for uh, two months in Florida for it. And right. I went to New York, hanging with my family for a couple months. And I was pretty much, I was playing some basketball with my friends. But other than that, I mean, I'm just locked inside studying tournaments. Damn, okay, that's cool. So um, when, you, when you're playing cash, did you ever like feel like you felt because obviously like you talked about you moved up from one one to one two to then like i guess two five five ten did you were you like studying at the time and, or did you just kind of make the breakthroughs through playing i guess um i mean i would watch some cash streams but they weren't that big then i mean there was some going on but it was mostly like live at the bike five ten i think was mainly what there was so yeah. i was watching some of that but i was definitely more um way less studying when I was playing cash, more just playing and learning from playing where tournaments, I definitely began studying a lot more. And I mean, I play a ton. I play almost every day, but even mm -hmm. on days when I play, um, I'm going to watch like a high roller or something at some point throughout the day and try to learn something. Wow. Me. That's cool. So then, um, so you, so you just got to tournaments where you like, and then I guess you said you went for like a deep study period. What's your like process of study? Like some people obviously like to use a solver. Some people will watch other other people play. They'll review hands. Like what do you tend to do? Um, I talk a lot of hands with uh my roommate, one of my best friends, Jacob Farrow. I don't know if you know who that is. He got a WPT Player of the Year two seasons ago. So oh right, okay, he really came out and crushed a couple of years ago. But he's been around for a while. Um, right. I watch 
I've probably seen all of these high roller final tables, like yeah, all the Tritons, the all the EPTs, stuff, Triton, yeah, EPTs. Yeah. I watched um, what's it called? Inside the Mind of a Pro. You heard of this? Okay. Winamax? No, no, I've not heard of this. They're on no, YouTube. Oh wow! It's YouTube. It's like um, a chain Mustafa, Kenneth season, Adrian Mateos, and it's literally them right. playing at the World Series. And they're explaining right. their thought process throughout these hands. It's honestly awesome. Um, I've never heard of this. Wow, this is a great. Crazy. Yeah, I would check it out. Great tool to use. But mostly, for sure, this is the number one thing for me that I used to study. They are these GG Super Millions final tables. Have you seen those? Yeah, I've watched some. There's some really great commentary on with those, those right? Yeah. Get um, some good it's Jeff on. Gross. He's the host. And he has a guest mm. pretty much every week. Uh, some of the guests yeah. are great. I think the last, the last one was Mike Joseph, if you know him. Yeah, he's uh, uh he's yeah. friendly with Jake actually. Yeah, I just did a podcast with him. Okay, I mean, he's gonna come out after yours. Yeah, cool, small cool. world. Yeah, but yeah, no, he's like a crusher for sure. Like he's a very really talented kid. Yeah, so I watch. Um, I literally watch pretty much all the hands, and just the those guys are truly the best players in the world that are playing those tournaments. So I yeah. really just love to see what they're doing in each position in certain spots. What hands are they taking to go for it? Like stack sizes, everything. And I really just right. watch a ton of it. That's how I learn. I uh, I've oh. never even looked at a solver, to be honest. Damn. Okay, wow, that's really interesting. I kind of like that though. I'm, I do. I think they're helpful, but can be very overrated. You know, you hear some people just always talk about solver and what the solver says, but it's like yeah, I mean, it, don't it definitely can't hurt. You know it definitely helps. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I'm super lazy. I I've said I'm gonna get one and use it and everything, but I'm just like <laughs> I think when you're winning the the daily every um, two three days, it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, no, it's still definitely. I mean, obviously, I'd love to play much bigger consistently. I don't. I mean, yeah, yeah. I love my dailies. I'm always gonna play them if there's no other bigger tournaments to play. But um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll tell you right now. I want to get into solvers and learn about them. But like I said, I'm super lazy. Right. I don't know if I'm gonna. So okay, I think you've told me. I think I definitely think for cash, if you're not looking at the theory in some spots, you're probably losing a lot of money. But I guess in tournaments, because every situation is probably unique, right? And you, you're never really gonna have the same situation that often. Oh, um, uh, other than like push forward and stuff. Yeah, but, definitely. Know, it's really hard. I there's definitely way more strategy in tournaments. I mean, cash. You mm. can pretty much always have the same sack size. You just top off and everything. And there's yeah, just exactly. where tournaments, you can't really control that. So you have to know all stack sizes, what to do, different parts of the tournament, yeah. pay jumps, everything. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I guess that leads to an inter- interesting question. So obviously you went through COVID and then now you're in Vegas. So like, what made what led to that jump from uh, from Florida to New York to Vegas? Um, so I grew up in New York. I went to college in Florida. So after Mm -hmm. I graduated, I uh, moved in with my family in New York for about 10 months. And I was driving to a local casino in an hour away. That was all right. I mean, the biggest game was on the weekends, maybe we'd get a 510, but it was pretty much 2-5. And uh, sometimes I'd drive a couple of hours to Parks Casino, which was further. Yeah, yeah. But a much better casino. But super long commute. So um, I just, my friend, one of my best friends had an extra year of uh, college. He was a lacrosse player, extra year of eligibility. And he, right. um, so he was home for winter break. So this must have been December, or January of that year while I was home. And mm. he just said, like, I don't remember how it happened, but he basically offered for me to, like, stay in his place for the for this month and just... I could drive five minutes to the Hard Rock, and I took it. And I don't know why, but I hopped in a daily, and I, I think I chopped it four ways. I got like five k or something. This had to be one right. of my, if not my first tournament cash. It's definitely like one of my first three or something. And I was just hooked. Okay. I was hooked. I just Sorry. loved it. I loved the whole tournament aspect of poker. So after I left, when he came back. I went back to New York and I was just like, I want to go back. So I packed up my yeah. stuff. I uh, went down to Florida. I was there from, I guess it had to be the beginning of 2019 to just two months ago, two and a half months ago. And the reason yeah. I what came to What did your parents think to this? Oh, um, so, sorry, when you left home, what did your parents think to you like pursuing poker? 
So at the beginning, they definitely did not like it. Me and my friends all gambled in high school and all the parents <laughs> would like have a group chat or something like, we can't let this happen, you know, like they were very mm-hmm. against the whole gambling. And um, hmm. then poker, like you try to explain that it's different. But they don't really understand it, you know? Like, poker is basically like blackjack (laughs) in their eyes at the beginning. So they knew I was playing a little bit in college, especially at the beginning when I was losing in that Mm -hmm. 1-1 game. Because I'd be like, my mom had access to my bank account. And I'd be like, mom, can you transfer? So I had some savings saved up. I'm like, I need some of that savings into the checking. (laughs) I'm like making shit up. I really hate to lie, but... I was making stuff up as to why I had it. Like I'm telling her that it was my friend's birthday and I took him out to the strip club. Like anything's better than that. I'm at the casino. Literally. Played a one one game. Yeah, literally. I'm telling her that like I'm blowing money at a strip club before I'm at the casino. (laughs) So um, after college, I uh, did not take a job. And I told, I promised my mom if I lose my money, I had like, I don't know not much, $2,000 left after paying off whatever I had to pay off. It's like, if I lose this, I'm going to get a job. And she saw like my bank account is increasing. You know, she's my, I don't come from money or anything, but um, like my, if I were to ask my parents for money, if I was in a tough spot, if it wasn't because I chose to play poker, I'm sure they would help me out. But because I chose to play poker, they made it clear, like, don't ask us for any, anything, (laughs) you know, like, this is you. Yeah. So eventually they see, like, I'm starting to make money, I'm making a living. And it's like, what can they really say? I'm doing what I love. And now they're super supportive. Nobody more supportive. I mean, my mom asked. Oh, that's so cool. My mom asked me every day, like, did you win last night? Like, how's it going? Oh, that's awesome, man. She loves it. Um. My dad, I think he kind of understands it. He uh, He's supportive for sure, but mm-hmm. my mom's super into it. No, that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So so then, yeah, so you uh, so you said you went to Florida, got the bug, and then you went then Vegas was the next stop, right? Yeah, my lease was up at the end of February this year. And mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I just, the daily tournaments in Tampa are a 180. Structure's pretty good. Um. You know what, actually, let me shout out the tournament director there. Um, his name is Yi Lee. Super good dude. Mm-hmm. Gives amazing structures. Now, I said in a recent podcast that part of my move was because the Tampa Hard Rock kind of went downhill for poker. In no way did I mean him. He's literally like the, mm. the best employee that there is. I meant the Hard Rock. There's no competition over there. So dealers would rather work at dog tracks. You know, they get paid better. Um, They're just, Mm. the dealers were pretty brutal. It reminded me of the World Series (laughs) lately. Between that. I'm going for my first time this summer. I've heard some horror stories. I heard heard one story where there was a dealer. I think it was like a four-way all-in. And he just said, fuck this, I'm going. And he just walks off. (laughs) Where at? The World Series? In the series, yeah. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like that was going on. But it just yeah. it just wasn't a great experience being at the table, you know. Um, I don't know. I just felt mm. like I had to come out here. Like, I just right. felt like it was the best move for me. And yeah. um, I just did it. I, I don't have a family. I'm single. Like, my family lives in New York. I, I, I'll see them the same as if I'm in Florida or Vegas. Okay. And uh, I, I speak to them. But it's like nothing's holding me back from making the move. So I just took no, shots. Really cool. so what, what was the moving process like? Did you try and move with poker players? Because I can imagine it's hard to get like rentals, right? When you're like a poker player. Yeah, I think we got super lucky. I came out here with my friend Jake, who was in Florida with me as well. Right. And, uh, same sort of thing. Nothing really holding him back. Um, mm-hmm. So he's just like, if you find a place, let's go. I'm in. Um, we sent our Hendon mobs to the... <laughs> leasing office for the place and they took it which was pretty yeah. surprising because in the past all my places right. i uh i've always had a roommate and i they have normal jobs put it in their name and i just deal with cash with them because it's it's right. tough as a poker player usually but this was super mm-hmm. easy we sent our hen and mobs i'm like listen if you want 
us to pay a few months in front or something, whatever you guys want. And it, they, it was yeah. easy. The place I'm actually living at is pretty much all, not all, but a ton of poker players live here. So all right, awesome. they know about it. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Um, so I guess like, the best question to follow on from that is, so why do you love the win so much? You seem to be uh, a good favorite win. of the win. So um, the win just has tournaments every day. Venetian does as well, but a lot of multi-days because mm-hmm. they technically have a series going on at all times. So all right. there's not always a one-day tournament there. So usually my typical schedule is I'll try to bag whatever Venetian has going on early let's say they have like three flights and then hopefully i get it done and then i'm gonna head over to win the next two days and try to win something over there but the win's awesome i mean have you ever been no first time in the summer oh sick okay yeah i would i mean you'll see there's nothing really compares just everything the staff the way that they treat you the cleanliness comfortability like the win's just awesome Venetian's cool too, for sure. Venetian's, if Venetian wasn't, Venetian, I would say this about them if they weren't, Mm -hmm. if we weren't comparing it to win right now. All all these places out here are great. I mean, there's competition. They have to be, you know, we're in Florida, there's not. So then if you come to the UK, I mean, London's not so bad. London's got some reasonable poker, um, some casinos and like reasonable poker scene, but I'm in like the north of England. And there's just nothing, man. We've got Dust or Dawn, which is Rob Young's poker place. Okay. I don't know, you know him, Rob Young? Of course. It's not bad. The structure's really dog. The, um, terrible structure. It's yeah. one of those ones. You know, it's like a deep stack for two levels. Then it's like a, a turbo. Then it's a hyper turbo. Yeah. So it does, it's pretty tough. It's a very, very like, look box kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I can't wait, man. I can't wait to actually play a real tournament where you can actually be deep stacked, you know, yeah. after a couple of levels. For sure. I mean, if you're coming out here this summer, you'll have that opportunity every single day. Yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm, I'm I'm super excited. So I guess I get a good question would be so like you want, obviously you won these is it five in eleven days? Was that the the number? I'm honestly not positive. I never fact checked them. I think they said six in two weeks or something. But the, yeah, the cra- the crazy thing is, um, I haven't like I haven't played all of these. Um, I honestly think I was on a streak where, I mean. I think I won like six out of eight or nine that I played. It was something stupid. S- since though, <laughs> since the publicity, I bricked a few. Yeah. They're uh, okay, right? Are, yeah, they're you game now. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like he can't win again. Like they're gonna do everything they can not to let me win, and it's working. They're getting me right well, now. Yeah, yeah. When, getting you. Yeah. You have to go to like the area now, the area daily instead. <laughs> no, no. I'm, when we get off this pod, I'm hustling right over to win today. I'm coming back for a title yeah. today. I'm gonna do whatever I, it, I, I can. I want to make a petition. I want to make a petition to Pokemon. If you win one more, they've got to change it to the the Jeremy Becker day no, or not, something. Not yet, not yet, but it's coming. <laughs> Close. I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling a big day today. Nice one, man. That's that's awesome. So I guess um, coming like from your, like, for um, if you're talking to like me, obviously a UK poker player and some European poker players. What's like your strategy for like obviously just crushing these fields because it's this is an insane win rate and you've obviously got some kind of understanding of how to beat them right um i'd say i mean obviously variance plays a part um i'll of course, you yeah. could if i get in two aces versus your seven dude solid pre and you beat me i'll say i take it great i mean i literally say nice mm-hmm. hand good luck and i'm sincere <laughs> like i'm not i'm not like one of these guys like in the low stakes you see it a lot like oh nice hand it's like the backhand compliment you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I truly, that's me. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a good loser. I don't mind. Okay. But in my uh, in my career, I'd say I'm sure every poker player says this, but did you see mm-hmm. when the Negreanu flipped out on Poker Go? He lost. I think he lost like pair. He had pair over pair, and the guy hit it, and he's just like, "This has happened every time for the last two years or something." Did you see that? Right. No, no, no. He was saying that he was just on the wrong side of variance for a very long time lately. And I swear, right. I mean, you could beat me with the seven deuce. I'll tell you, nice hand, good luck, super sincere. But I'm texting in my group chat, this is unreal. Every single day I'm <laughs> losing like this, you know? So I yeah. I felt like I've just been on the wrong side of variance for so long. And now I just feel like hopefully it's turning around, you know? I used to get dealt mm-hmm. two aces and... I could bluff off my tournament on the river and I feel fine inside while the dude's in the tank. I feel fine. I get dealt, right. I get dealt two aces 
and somebody says all in, I just know I'm losing the hand. <laughs> That's how I felt for That's so long, like truly just, yeah. and it's starting to change. I, uh, I won it all in the other day. This net, I swear, this is never, this never happens to me. I, uh, mm-hmm. I four bet ripped ace jack on the bubble. I covered, but still guy sna- snap yeah. snaps me with two Queens, which is okay. for me in general. I like to think it's very rare that I put it in behind. I, I knew I was going to win the hand ace right on the turn. And think. you know what? <laughs> it, this has been coming for a few years now where I thought it's, it has to turn around. It's mad. Like I, it has to. And I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess hopefully it's happening in these dailies. I hope it happens in some other tournaments as well, but I'll take it. I'm not yeah. going to bitch that it's but, the dailies. I love these dailies. I'll take, I respect that, man. I'll take 6,000. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, you can't turn your nose up. And I guess, like in one sense, a lot. Of, if I, I think if I asked a lot of poker players, they'd sit here and say, "Well, I just think I'm better. I'm more aggressive than the other people." But you're just like, nah, variance. <laughs> yeah, just variance, yeah. man. It's starting yeah. to turn around. Obviously, I study a ton. I, I have, um, I have a ton of live tournament experience. I mean, I play. I don't know what it is on Hendon Mob. I'm gonna assume I have over. Your Hendon three... Mob is insane. Dude. Do, do you have it's... it? Do you have it up? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna right here. I'm it, gonna assume so I have much. over 300 caches or something, right? I mean, it doesn't give me a number, but I'm gonna say this. It, on results, pretty, yeah. on results, it'll say on results, uh, right. uh, there's a number, like top left. Top I think left. it's over 300. Okay, yeah, no, uh, I think I'm, I think I'm in the wrong bit for it, but yeah, no, I'm, I, it looks like it's more than 300. Basically, it's Are like you, yeah. I've cached a ton of tournaments. A ton of small tournaments, but like I just have the experience, you know. Where these best players mm-hmm. in the world, I mean, you could look them up. People with millions of dollars on Hendon Mob, they might have like fifty caches. They're just for like three hundred and ten. Three hundred and ten. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you look up these people who are the best in the world. They might have fifty or sixty caches. They're just like million dollar scores. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. live tournaments. There's probably not many, definitely not my age, that have played as much as me. Right. You know, so yeah, that's, that that's, definitely, yeah. I have a ton of experience with these one day semi turbo tournaments, you know? So obviously that's going to help. What's the field like in for these kind of things? Um, For the win daily you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you know, you're like your average Vegas daily crowd. Are you going to like Taurus in? And I'd say there's def- there's definitely people grinding them. There's definitely winning players oh, yeah. that are grinders that are playing these tournaments for sure. Then yeah. there's a lot of, I mean, I can't imagine how much money some of these people that are playing this $200 tournament has that you see at the win where it's just like they're on vacation, having a great time. Just, mm-hmm. I mean, these guys are playing a $200 tournament which I'm sure is so meaningless to them. And they're just yeah. having a blast. Like, they play poker before, obviously, but they're not like – I mean, I had one the other day where we were hand for hand, and I had to explain to this guy, like, what it is, you know? So there's a, yeah. little, there's a little bit of that, but it's not. There's definitely more people that know what's going on than don't know what's going on, for sure, 100%. Okay. I mean, I've heard people say, like, oh, he's playing these people. They've never played a tournament before. That's not what it is. Come on. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was nah. like that. I thought maybe, you know, you're going to get some kind of fun wrecks, like, you know, who want to, like, splash around. And yeah, no, like, there's also some, that, ca- yeah. some cash game grinders jump in to switch it up. Like, people know what's right, going yeah. on, man. Everybody who's sitting at that table paid their money to play, and they have yeah. money to play for a reason. Like, they're smart people, you know? Yeah. I think one of the funniest things about your whole your, your whole run is seeing, like, the some of the comments, some of the haters, man. There's oh, been you, man. someone. Someone said you were cheating with the because it was five I'm frames. Cheating, you know the one. There's <laughs> one that like I just can't get my mind around. I saw yeah. somebody. I think it's Poker Flops made a video. Did you yeah, see? Yeah. yeah. I saw in the comments, and I've never replied to a troll in my life so far. I had to reply <sighs> to this one. He's like, "Oh, I remember when we were playing one two at the Tropicana." Listen. I, I put it on my mother in the comments. I said, I've never played poker at the Tropicana. Like, it wasn't me. Like, I, I swear <laughs> to you guys, it wasn't me. And yeah. another guy comments and goes, I was there. I remember this kid. He was, he was such a douche at the table. And it's like, why are people saying this? Like, 
they just yeah. like they're just trying to make you look bad for no reason. I've never been there. Like say, say I didn't, I didn't say even know that about Kareem, honestly. Say, I don't yeah. even know if they do. <laughs> say, say, say it happened at the Hard Rock where I've been or something. You know, they're telling yeah. me I was at Tropicana playing, being a douche at the table. It what wasn't me. They know it wasn't me. I'm sure they're just like people just want yeah. you to look bad for whatever reason. I really don't get it. Yeah. I think it's a poker thing, you know. Like I was going through the comments on your thing, and it was like someone tagged Joey Ingram and said, "Make an investigation." In- for this hey, case. if I get a Joey Ingram investigation, that's awesome. <laughs> Big fan of Joey that Ingram. Shout out to him. Yeah. I mean, if he catch, if he finds me <laughs> cheating somehow, please put it on blast. All right, let me. I'd be honored right, to be part of it. the investigation. Joey, let's do a twenty-four-hour investigation into the wind dailies. I'll be <laughs> honored. Let's go. I saw one guy who was just like, "Oh, people give away stacks in this, blah blah blah," and I was just like, "Man, come on! Like, that's just that's you, so you know, so to, much bitterness." To, you know? to be honest, it's like there's probably less of that. You play in these tournaments mm-hmm. with a lot of regs that know what's going on. They're gonna bluff it off to you for sure. They got, there's balance mm-hmm. where I mean, yeah. there's not a lot of just triple barreling with stone air in these. Nobody's just handing you the chips. It's going to happen less in these, actually. I'm the only idiot out there trying to give it away. Bluff, yeah. You're the only one crazy enough to bluff, and they're not folding. I'll tell you that. If you, <laughs> not, you they have, that, you're not, they have not been folding. I got I to gotta have it a little bit more nowadays, but that's all right. Yeah, that's awesome. So I guess one nice comment, though, one nice comment, too, was called Negranu, like who you spoke about earlier. And he, he was interested in backing it. And yep. Do you want to give us an update on that and tell us about the story about that? So, um, my friend sent me a, uh, screenshot of him, his tweet saying, mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it said like, is this kid the next one? Like granted they're low stakes mm-hmm. tournaments, but I, th- yeah. I thought my friend like Photoshopped it or something. Like I'm looking at the screenshot. Like, I don't, you're that sick enough to fuck with me like this. Like how long did this <laughs> take you to do? It's a photo edit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then like I got another text. I go, all right, they got me. I'm going on Twitter. Let's see it. And he, you know, he really did it. And that's that's unreal. You know, for him yeah. for him to see it and say something. And it's like as a poker player, he knows no matter the stakes, like to actually win a tournament and close them out. And I don't know if he knew I wasn't doing deals or anything, but for mm-hmm. him to just see that and say something. I mean, it's unreal. Obviously, I thought he was joking about the backing. I replied. I said, like, don't tease me or something. And he DM'd me. Yeah. He's like, I'm not teasing. Let's do something. So okay. I've been uh, talking to him and Josh Aurier. It would be the two of them. And, right. um, uh, yeah, we're going to work something out. I've uh, In the past, I never wanted to be backed or anything. But this is mm-hmm. Daniel Negreanu and Josh Aurier. Definitely going to do something with them. Wow. The, yeah. it's not a, We haven't 100% agreed to nothing yet but we're gonna do something for sure gonna be That's a awesome. great experience and i'm super excited i'm gonna i just think i'm gonna yeah. win the money i'm gonna win myself money just do it man um, just just get put in a 25 k and just win it you yeah know? i just, don't know if we're win. gonna be firing off the 25s right away i'm not really <laughs> sure that would be sick but um yeah i mean whatever we agreed to i'm super excited i mean just to be able to speak with these guys about poker life everything i um they both have the same agent actually i met with right. him i mean we're talking about potentially doing some sort of like sponsorships or something obviously it would help if i win a bracelet or a final table something sick but i mean there's just so yeah. much opportunity when you're connected with these guys so i mean right that's so I'm cool definitely man. gonna try to make the most of it absolutely you gotta ride that wave dude and um you know, it's it's just crazy. It's like, and then I saw you. You're, I mean, I was gonna say, how have you handled the attention of this all? Because obviously, you got all these. I think it's some. I think one guy really kicked off. I think it was Tyler, right? Who quote tweeted your what like your like another one of a win tweet, and then he was just like, look, you know, you can beat these low stakes t- tournaments pretty pretty well if you like do certain things. And then you just had like so much attention, and then you're on barstool before you know it. Yeah, that was a uh, that was unreal. Yeah. I got barstool DMing me. You on a pop. Like I'm a big Barstool fan, so that was sick. Yeah, um, man, it's so cool. Yeah, I don't know. I think people just um, I mean, the podcasting guys like, imagine you get an interview with somebody who like hasn't really like hit made it or hit it big yet or something, and it's like mm-hmm. you guys were the first to notice. Like it would just 
it would just be sick. And I mean, I think I'm going to be a bigger player one day, hopefully sooner than later. But like, of course, we all dream of making it into the high stakes. So, That's um, it, man. Yeah. I mean, I sit at the, I sit in, yesterday I'm at Venetian. Um, what was the buy-in? $600 multi-day. One bullet, by the way, which has, I've oh. actually been doing way more lately for, I don't know if it's just a coincidence or if like, I'm just scared to blast it off because I got these people on Twitter <laughs> saying I'm firing away in these tournaments. Yeah, I was about to say, you got, you got a hater comment saying, no, I've seen this kid just fire bullets. T- tons, of, bullets. tons of people saying that. <laughs> And you know what? I don't know yeah. if I'm like, like <laughs> thinking about it in the back of my mind. Like, no, nah, I'm not gonna go for it here. Like, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to rebuy and have to read about it on Twitter. Like, <laughs> I, I don't think it's Game actually. For <laughs> I don't think it's affecting me. But it's just yeah. a coincidence that I've just been one bulleting the last like week and a half or whatever. Whenever this started. Um, yeah. Well, maybe there's like some guy who looks exactly like you, and he's a one-two grinder at Tropicana, and he just Here, fires. Like, no, I, I don't want to. I've definitely fired away before. Okay. You know, if you think right. if you think you have an edge in these tournaments, and registration is still open, like I'm just gonna rebuy. I don't. If they let me course, rebuy yeah. and I'm out, I will rebuy. But I mean, it's not every tournament that I'm firing away. It, there was one really bad one where I'm guessing these guys witnessed i did like eight or something Mm -hmm. i got there like the last level and a half and they got me a bunch over and over (laughs) so i'm guessing these guys that are talking blind shoving i think someone said you were blind shoving yeah not true obviously super standard all in i I would never i would never just throw away money i don't care i don't care if i have 10 million dollars sitting under my mattress i'm never going to show up to a tournament and start blind shoving that's just not what i'm going to do i don't care if it's a hundred (laughs) dollar tournament okay i'm going to try to make the best decision and that's the truth um your question you asked something oh how am i dealing with uh i guess the attention yeah attention yeah it's crazy i mean i had i'm sitting at the table and i got some like i don't know mid-30s lady like oh my god you're jeremy becker right it's like, yeah, well that's me. Like, I play these two hundred dollar <laughs> tournaments just like you. Like, we're the same. Yeah. You know, that's crazy to me. Like, someone recognizes you. You're like and, a hero for all these daily regulars, aren't you? I guess. Like. I guess for sure. And then I definitely notice. I mean, there's definitely people that are in the poker room. Like, why the fuck is this kid getting all this attention for these low stakes tournaments? Like, this could be yeah. me, you know. I'm sure there's a ton <laughs> a of that. Rag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like all these Ms. Regs. I really try to, even before I really got hot, I try to, not that I wasn't beforehand, but just overly conscious about, like, trying to do nice little things. Like, not in poker, just if you're walking into a casino, like, holding the door open a little bit longer to let the people. I think good things happen to good people. like. I don't know. I just, right. you try to go out of your way a little bit just to do these small little things to be nicer to people. And, you know, maybe this is like God giving back saying, you know what, you're going to fucking win this tournament here for doing like, I believe in shit yeah. like that, you know, good energy is super, super yeah, man. real. And I didn't used to believe right. in that stuff. I'm like the cards, you're all in with two aces. Even if you think you're going to lose, that's not going to make you lose. Like it doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know? And yeah, yeah. I, it's crazy. I really fucking believe in it now. For whatever reason, like, I think you just have to have good energy and good things will happen to you. That's awesome, man. Um, so I, I guess you kind of touched on, 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 touched on it a little bit, but what's your kind of, like, poker dreams, I guess? Do you want to, like, be on the Triton circuit? Do you want to come play in Europe a bit? Do you want to fire the high rolls in the U.S.? Definitely. I haven't thought about outside the country. I'm sure one day right. if I become super mm-hmm. successful, I'd love to fire off in Europe and whatnot. But I mm-hmm. actually answered a question like this the other day. It was like, what's your like poker goals? And I said, I want to be able to just wake up, you know, like the Poker Go Cup, all these like high mm-hmm. roller series that they have once in a while. I just want to yeah. be able to wake up, walk over to the studio and play these every single day without a thought, you know? Like right now yeah, yeah. I wake up, I'll play these dailies every day. I want to be able to do that with these 10 Ks, these 25 Ks, these 50 Ks and not even think about it, stress about it. Just so, yeah, I want to make it in high stakes, play these high rollers, smaller fields. Like I've 
that's the dream for me right now. I would love to play those. Yeah, I mean, they look so cool, like, especially like the Triton, obviously, like Poker Go, Deep Stack, you know, you're playing Theory, like, everyone's trying, everyone's a thinking player. Yes. It's a real battle. That's another thing. Um, I would much prefer to play against thinking players rather than the crazy, like, cowboy that just there's no strategy involved. Like, he's just doing whatever. Those guys are tough for me, personally. I yeah always tougher for it just, me. It just drives the variance up, right? It feels like they yeah the variance matters a lot more but when you're playing against somebody who's thinking and you do something that's right it will work yes i guess if that makes any sense i remember i was in a tournament recently um i've got some mates that were here this they'll, i was just complaining no end after like like you do in the chat i was just like steaming but it was in a tournament in a day two not far off the money and uh, i was chipping down a bit i think i had like 22 bigs or something it went like open call 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 i'm in the bottom vishak suited pretty standard rip um Oh, sorry, I think it was limps. It was limps, sorry. Yeah, it limped around. You got called I by four or five suited or something. Close. It, it, it folded around to this like, well-known uh, Chinese guy. I won't say his name, but he's like a he's, he's a nice guy. He, he gives a lot of action to everybody, but he just sat there. I didn't know him at the time, at this point. And he sat there, he scratched his head, and he had a look of frustration. And I was like, oh, maybe he's got like a pocket pair, right? He's in the tough spot. He just like slams his chips in. He barely covers me. We're not far off the money, right? Day two, he slams his chips back in. I'm like, oh, right, okay, we're flipping. He has 10 7 suited. Yeah, you're dead. I, you're dead. I stand up. I'm just like, oh no. And he just pops a I, 7. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've lost. I, I promise. I said I have tons of experience in these sort of tournaments. I've lost like that more than anybody in the world. I promise. You're, you just, <laughs> when you see his yeah. hand, you, did you feel it? Like, oh, I'm not winning this. Yeah, fight. I got up, dude. I stood up. I was yeah. just like, I, I, I was a bit, I, was, I swore. I was like, what the fuck? And then I got up and was like, okay, right, it's over. Yeah, you're just not going to win that hand. That's just how it goes. I mean, that's it, man. I don't you know. You don't see that in the book of Go, which was, you know, you don't exactly. see Triton, you don't see exactly. Poker, yep. just jamming it in with 10 7. Never, you know? never. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Um, I guess, yeah, man, that's like, it's such a great interview. Um, obviously, I'll, we'll get this up to an article as well for the for the people at Poker Listings. Um, so, do you want to let people know where they can find you and, and all, any of your content or whatever, you know, Instagram? Um, I don't really put out content. I'm on social media. Um, are you, you going to do content? Is that something you'd think about? In the future? I'm not sure. Honestly, um, I'm just worried about trying to crush tournaments. I don't, I don't really yeah. want to vlog or anything. I play some hands super. I don't know if weird is the yeah. word. You don't, but, you, don't, you don't want to get the comment section going. <laughs> not, no, not even that. I just don't want people knowing exactly how I think. I don't know. Right, okay. now, right now, no plans yeah. to vlog or anything like that. Just but, I mean... I definitely, I tweet sometimes, I post stories on Instagram. Um, I have the same username on both, jbex2417, jbex2417. Cool. Um, you can follow me on there, check it out. And uh, awesome. yeah, that's it. Nice one. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, catch you at the World Series. Yeah, for sure. Say what's up. Uh, appreciate you having me. I'll see you out here. Cheers, dude.